What's going on guys? Spring has sprung and in today's video we're going to be opening up the ponds, taking off the covers, seeing how they've all fared over the winter months, checking in on all of the fish and I'll also be sharing my plans for pond season 2023. So starting off with the above ground mini pond here. So we set this pond up about 12 months ago now so it has been running for a full year. And if you haven't seen the videos of the build of this pond, I have got a full playlist of all of them videos which shows everything from putting the base down, the cladding, the filtration, the fish, all of that so if you're interested in seeing that yeah i'll put a link in the description below but a quick overview for you it's around about 500 liters i think yeah it's about 500 liters which i think is around about 160 gallons got a diy bog filter on the back of it there it's been set up for about 12 months now so just been through its first winter so let's get the covers off and see how everything's looking Okay, so the covers and the insulation is all off, but before we proceed, a quick health and safety announcement. Um, when using a knife, do be more careful than I was because I just cut my thumb pretty bad. I have managed to bandage it up, but um, yeah, cut it whilst I was getting the tape off this pipe. So yeah, just be careful when using a knife. But uh, that being said, let's have a look inside the pond. Okay, so first impressions, we're looking pretty good. The water is crystal clear. All three fish that we've got in here are accounted for. We've got Big Mo down there, and uh, we've also got Tom and Jerry down there somewhere. But I'll tell you what I will do, actually. I'll put these little extension pipes on, just uh, stop that splashing so we can see a little better. But yeah, it's looking pretty good. Yeah, the water is crystal, crystal clear. Uh, we've got a little bit of algae growing on the sides and on the bottom there. The, uh, the pondweed has done really well. We've got the watercress, that's looking pretty good. We've got some growing in the planter there and we've got some floating around here as you can see in the bog filter we've got some iris starting to come through and uh, we've also got a little bit of typer there hopefully we've got that's a little bit of watercress there hopefully that will get going soon and uh, we've also got the i can't remember what that plant's called but i'll put the name of that plant on the screen but uh, i think that's starting to do all right sending out these little runners so everything's looking pretty good with the pond so far other than that though the water lily we've got down in the corner here has got some little leaves on it so hopefully they will start to rise up to the surface of the water sometime soon but yeah generally i'm very happy with this uh, pond over the winter we did have a bit of an issue there was a cold snap mid-december where the bog filter literally froze solid uh, so i ended up having to turn the filtration off for a few days whilst that was frozen but I turned it back on once it thawed out and everything was fine but after that I did add a little heater which you can see down there now I attached that to if we go in here I attached that to an inkbird thermostat which I've got in here which is pretty cool uh the oh I don't know why that's I don't know why that's doing that but yeah uh basically it's telling me that I've got a temperature of 12.8 degrees C in the pond uh, i'm not too sure what that is in fahrenheit but i will put that up on the screen and i've got it set set to uh, six degrees which means if the pond temperature drops below six degrees it should kick on and just prevent it from freezing again so i don't think it actually came on though because i don't think it got cold enough after that cold snap so i don't think that heater has been on at all but it was good for peace of mind okay so that's a nice little update of the above ground mini pond the algae issue that we have got in here is very common for this time of year and the reason for it is because the pond plants haven't really properly started growing yet so they're not able to use the nutrients up in the pond which is allowing the algae to make use of that nutrients it should sort itself out the further we get into like spring and summer as the pond plants start to get bigger they will start to use up all that excess nutrients and the algae should start to die back but that being said let's move on to the next pond Okay, so next up we've got the White Cloud Mountain Minnow Pond and this pond's been set up for about two years now. So this is its second winter that it's just coming out of. No heating went into this pond at all this year. Unfortunately, I haven't got a setup video of this pond because I built this before I started the YouTube channel. However, I have got a build video of this bog filter. So if you're interested in seeing that, I will put a link in the description below. 
and it's actually grown in really nicely. I'll put up a picture of what this looked like when I first built it and you can see that this is the plants have grown in really nicely. So yeah, it's about the same size as the above ground mini pond. I think it's about 500 litres, uh, which yeah, is about 130 or 160 gallons or something like that. I'm not too sure, I'll put it up on the screen. But yeah, that being said, let's get the covers off and uh, see how the white clouds have uh, done over the winter. Okay, so the covers are all off and uh, we're looking good. Can't see any of the white clouds right now, but they are in here, I've spotted them. Most of them are still down in the deeper areas of the pond, down the bottom there. But uh, yeah, it's looking good. I did have a little outflow thing that I could put on there to stop the splashing to see more easily. But oh, in fact, there it is. Down. Oh, there's a little white cloud. Yeah, so they're doing all right. But yeah, the little outlet pipe is down there. So I might actually see if I can get that out. Yeah, I'll try and get that out and then we'll be able to see in the pond a little bit easier. Okay, so yeah, we can see a little bit better now. Still can't see, oh, there is anything. Oh yeah, there's a little white cloud down there. So yeah, they seem to have done okay over the winter considering I didn't put any heating on this pond at all. Everything ran, continued to run, the pumps continued to run, nothing froze on this pond. As I mentioned earlier, it is run by this bog filter and uh, horse, horsetail, that's what this is called. Yeah, horsetail. And that, this is actually like fast becoming my favorite bog filter plant because it, it grows nicely but it's not invasive. So yeah, if you're looking for a cool plant for your bog filter, get some of this horsetail. But yeah, the pond's looking good. As I mentioned, crystal clear. We have again got a little bit of algae, but as I said about the uh, above ground mini pond, that is very common for this time of year. But yeah, it's looking good. Very pleased with that. Uh, water lily should hopefully start to throw up a few leaves soon. But yeah, that being said, let's move on to the next pond. And that pond is the DIY patio pond with bog filter. And this is my most recent pond. I think I set it up about eight months ago, something like that. It was like at the end of last summer. And this is, I'm not too sure what, what size this is because it is basically just a massive planter. But I estimate it to be about 200 litres, which I think is about 50 gallons. And it has my rice fish in it. So that being said, let's get the covers off and see what's going on inside. Okay, so there we go, the covers are off. And the first thing I'm noticing is, it is a lot, a lot of algae. Uh, that is gonna need some attention. But uh, yeah, the rice fish seem to be doing good. I don't know if anyone noticed, just as I took the cover off, I think most of them were all up at the surface, but as I took it off, they got scared and headed off. See one down there. Tell you what, I'll actually I'll pop this, I'll pop this back on. So we can see a little bit better. Oh yeah, see, look, there's one down there. And I've seen quite a few, there's one down there somewhere. But yeah, that's looking good apart from the algae. The actual water is crystal clear. But yeah, that is quite an algae issue. Pondweed seems to be doing all right though, so that's good. Bog filter wise, we've got a little bit of typha. That's a bit of new spring growth just coming through there. Got the horsetail again, that's looking all right. Did have a bit of uh, water press in there. That seems to have died off though. I did put it in though right at the end of last season, so I probably didn't have time to get going. If you are thinking of building yourself a DIY bog filter, definitely check out the video of this pond build. I've got two videos on exactly how I built this pond. And uh, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty decent video. It's uh, This bog filter's got a clean out valve at the back there for easy maintenance. And it's also got a little pre-filter in there. So might give you a few ideas if you were planning on building yourself a bog filter. That being said though, this pond did make it through the winter without any issues whatsoever. I did add a heater though, uh, so that would definitely have helped. Again, like I did with the above ground mini pond, I connected that up to a thermostat, one of the little Inkbird thermostats, and set it to around about like six degrees, which just stopped it from freezing. So I think that was definitely worth doing that because I didn't have any issues with this pond whatsoever over the winter months. So yeah, on to the next pond. Okay, so this is my main pond. It's also my biggest pond and um, 
yeah, it's been set up for about three years now. Unfortunately, I haven't got any videos on the setup of this pond because that was way before I started the YouTube channel. But yeah, it's about 600 litres, which I think is around about maybe 180 gallons. But yeah, I'll put that up on the screen. It's run by quite a few filters, to be honest. Got a bog filter here made out of a trash can. And uh, then I've also got the waterfall filter in the back right hand corner of the pond over there, which I sort of made into a bog filter, planted it all up and stuff. Uh, there's an internal little filter which I turned off over the winter and uh, oh there's also like a little pressure filter under there which actually feeds the waterfall filter so probably a bit over filtered but you know it's like you get a bit carried away sometimes don't you but uh, it's got quite a few gold well I think it's got six goldfish in so we'll get the covers off and see how everything's looking. Okay, there we go, covers are off and uh, everyone's looking good. Look at the size of some of them fish down there. But yeah, crystal clear waters, once again, a bit hard to see because of the lighting situation. But yeah, there's that internal filter that I was talking about. Probably get that turned on over the next couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, the pond weed is working well at keeping the water clear and uh, hardly got any algae actually in this pond. Bit on the, bit on like the edges and stuff, but really, very nice. I think that's probably because this is the most established pond, having been running for a good three years. And uh, yeah, so I'll just show you the filtration. So in that corner there, we've got like a little filtration box. It's basically a plastic box with sponges in that, these, uh, that the pump sits in. That pumps water out into this pressure filter here, and then that heads off, goes into the bottom of this waterfall feature, rises up through all the rock and gravel in there, got plants in there, and and water falls back into the pond. And uh, we've also, this bog filter here, that's the pump for it there. And that is turned off at the moment. I turned that off over the winter because I didn't really need that much filtration running over the winter. But uh, yeah, hopefully this is still full of water and these plants should be fine. So we'll get that turned on at some point over the next few days. But yeah, this pond's looking good. You can see the, uh, this is all new spring growth. That's uh, iris and then we've got the Lots of this horsetail stuff growing in there, some more water iris there. There is a, yeah, there's the water lily down there, a bit hard to see, but hopefully that will start to grow soon. Little fish cave under there, a bit hard to see, but yeah, this pond's looking good. Uh, I do plan though to take this pond out this year and um, rebuild it like two or three times the size. So that is what this season is going to be all about, rebuilding this pond. So I'm pretty excited about that. And that will be starting in my next video. So if you're interested in seeing that, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Also, if you're enjoying this video so far, I might as well hit the like button. But uh, yeah, everything's looking good in this pond so far. I did have a pretty major problem with this pond over the winter though. Luckily, I noticed like pretty quickly, so I was able to like sort it out. But basically what happened was, it was in that really cold snap when a lot of the pond was starting to freeze. However, the waterfall filter did continue to run and somehow it got the water got diverted out of the pond and I just happened to come out here one day and I could hear the waterfall was way louder than usual. Uh, so I had a quick look under the, under the covers and I realised it was because the pond was being emptied and the water was being diverted. Luckily it could never be completely emptied because I haven't got the pumps out on the bottom so that was good. But uh, yeah, that was... Um, that was uh, almost a bit of a disaster really. So luckily I managed to top the water back up and everything was fine, didn't lose any fish or anything like that. But yeah, that's definitely something to take into account over the winter. If you are continuing to run your pumps and stuff, there is a chance that if things freeze, like water can be diverted outside of the pond. As I mentioned earlier though, this pond is gonna be coming out over the next couple of weeks to make room for a much bigger and better pond. So things like that I'll be able to take into account with the new design. This has been a good pond though, as I said, it's been set up for three years now. I learned a lot from this pond, but yeah, I'm just ready to upgrade it uh, and uh, build something a bit bigger. I think the fish will appreciate it. So yeah, it's gonna be cool. Uh, the plan with these fish actually is to move them into the above ground mini pond temporarily. And once the big pond, the new big pond is built, I'll move all of the goldfish into that. And then that will free up the above ground mini pond. And I might put the white clouds into that and maybe some rice fish as well. But yeah, that is going to bring us to the end of this video. If you have enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you want to see the, uh, the big pond build. And I'll see you on the next one.